Hello everyone, how are you today? This is Mark. I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. In English, there are a myriad of exceptions. We took a look at the present perfect, uh, we took a, a look at uh, the, the nouns and also adjectives. In this case, though, I want to look at what you don't know about verbs. Yes, let's look at verbs. First, let's look at what they can act as. Yes, they can act as full verbs or main verbs, just like go, walk, paint, etc. They can also act as modal verbs. In this case, they need the full verbs or the main verbs to convey their meaning. So, modal verbs can be like would, might, may, could, should, etc. They can also act as auxiliary verbs, and you know the main auxiliary verbs. They are be, have, and do. They also need full verbs or main verbs in this case to place them in the present or in the past or in the future. So we're going to look at this in a minute. You know that verbs can be stative, dynamic, or even both. So the stative verbs are obviously, they don't require movement. They describe states or conditions, just like be, feel, love, wish, need, mind, etc. Or uh, we said that we are going to talk about dynamic verbs, and these dynamic verbs are obviously the ones that require movement or change. So, write, paint, go, slap, come, close, etc. And I said that they can be both. And this is the point that I want to talk about. They can be both, yes, both, both dynamic and both stative. So, they can change meaning according to the context they are placed in. So, let's, let's look at be, for example. Be can be dynamic and stative. So, be, you're being nasty. If I say you're being nasty, in this, in this case, being, the verb to be, means to behave in a nasty way. So, it's a dynamic verb in this case, right? But if I say, you are a nice boy, in this case, are, the verb to be, is stative, is a stative verb. So, let's look at another example. Have, with the verb to have. Yes, have can be both dynamic and stative. So, with the dynamic usage, I gave you this example. She's having a shower. To have a shower or to take a shower in American English. She's having a shower. In this case, having is dynamic. So, have as a state of verb is like she has two brothers or she has uh, tons of books. Okay, it's a stative verb. Let's look at another verb, look. And for a dynamic usage, she is looking for a job. To look for is to search, right? To look for is a phrasal verb. And we're going to look at phrasal verbs in a minute. She's looking for a job. And so this is a dynamic verb in this case. So for a state of case of the verb, we can say that lady looks great. That lady looks great. Other verbs that can be dynamic and uh, stative are see, smell, taste, think, feel, weigh, measure, etc. I'm going to erase this and I'm going to look at other points of verbs. So, by now, you should know that verbs, like words in English, can have a Latinate or Greek root or Germanic root. The ones that are or have a Latinate 
or Greek roots are considered more sophisticated. So, let's look at some examples. We have arrive from arrivare in Latin, arrive, and the Germanic or Old English root verb could be reach. So, another one, apparire in Latin, appear, so is in English, right? Appear, and the Germanic or Old English verb would be show. Ingest, ingest from Latin, and eat from Old English or uh, Germanic. Meliorate or cure from Latin, to heal is the uh, Germanic or Old English. When we talk about verbs, we need to mention phrasal verbs. What are phrasal verbs? They are groups of two or more words that put together creates a whole new meaning. So they follow the pattern verb plus particle plus particle plus particle. It depends, right? So the particle, what is a particle? A particle can be an adverb or a preposition. The phrasal verbs are used mostly in uh, informal context, so orally, um, but not always. Let's look at some uh, verbs, some phrasal verbs, just to see the equivalent in, uh, with using the Latinate root. So we have look down on, look down on somebody, look down on somebody. If you want to replace this phrasal verb, you can replace it with the spice, which comes from Latin, the spice. Now, another example could be talk over, talk over. And the uh, Latinate verb could be discuss, discuss. Then uh, another one could be turn down, turn down. Turn down can have two meanings, right? And we know that turn down the volume, for example, lower the volume or reject. Turn down an offer for a job, for example. I rejected the job. Turn down. And then we have call off. Cancel. Cancel. Call off. Cancel. So, the other point that I want to mention is that verbs can be uh, formed using suffixes or prefixes. So, the ones with prefixes, I gave you some examples because there are so many. If you want to watch a lesson on prefixes, suffixes or phrasal verbs, you can click here. So, prefixes, let's look at some verbs with this. This charge, this appear, this arm. Then we have with un, undo, unbend, unfasten. Now we have another one with miss, right? Misunderstand. And you know what it means, right? Misunderstand, you understand. You understood something else. Misunderstand. Misshape, misinform, etc. There are so many. Then with suffixes, suffixes are the ones that are at the end. There are two uh, letters or three letters that are put at the end of the words. But if you want to watch a lesson on this, you have the lesson and you may click it here. Now, shorten, lengthen, soften. Then we have realize with eyes, the uh, suffix eyes. So I wrote it in American English, but you can even write it with an S in British English. Realize, industrialize, patronize. Then we have with eight, eight. So irritate, complicate, fascinate. Okay, now I'm going to erase this and I'm going to show you two other points, the last two points about verbs. Just two other things that I need to say about verbs. Verbs can have a past tense, right? You need to remember that verbs can be regular or irregular. There is a lesson on this and you can click here to watch that lesson. But let me remind you that when we add 
ed to regular verbs like correct, corrected, you need to pay attention because okay, correct, corrected. But how about close? Close the okay, closed. We add the d at the end because we have the e uh, at the end of the verb. So we need to add just the d. And remember also the pronunciation closed. Now we have cry. What about cry? It ends with y. We take out the y and we add i e d. So cried. Then the irregular ones, you have to remember them. Uh, like I said, there is a good lesson on regular and irregular verbs. And in this case, um, in my lesson, I will teach you how to learn the irregular verbs by groups. This will help you remember them in a better way. Now, the last point that I want to mention about verbs is that sometimes ver verbs can act as nouns. They are called gerunds. You just add ing at the end of the verb. Um, so they are usually used at the beginning of a sentence. Let's look at my two examples. Smiling is good for you. Smiling is good for you. So the act of smiling is good for you. So you need to smile more. Studying English increases your chances to find a good job. So studying, if you study English, you will find a good job. This is what it means. But studying, again, studying is the gerund here. Studying English increases your chances to find a good job. Well, I hope you enjoyed the lesson. If you have any comments, any requests, or if you want to post your own example, you may do so under this video. Next week, you'll get a new lesson if you subscribe to my channel. Don't forget that. Don't forget to share the lesson if you liked it. Have a great day and I see you next week with a new lesson. Bye bye.